Bob Weigel losing his mind here and this is a CLDK 600 this one's uh, turned on here should be working now because I'm losing my mind and I didn't have a card in here yeah it's all fine now okay but let's let it cool down for a while I just ruined my experiment okay Also. Okay. Hmm. She hold on the edge. <laughs> ah, missed. Come on, do your kung Where fu it? there, Where brother. Is Where is it? Oh, there we go. Kung fu. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Brazil nuts. Yeah. Hmm. Good stuff, Maynard. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. We should post that on YouTube. <laughs> mm. Don't try this at home, kids. Inside a CLDK 600, this machine, there's some spare parts, what a mess, huh? Your, C, your basic CPU board here, the typical battery leak happens here. It may uh, destroy anything in this circumference pretty much. I'm yet to see big issues over here, but uh, definitely that resistor pack, definitely that chip and uh, need to be checked anyway sometimes it survives and DAC sockets sometimes I've had problem with and very often these two uh, chips fail the um, which is the DAC buffer and that's the uh, comparator that takes test point eight there it is you'll never see it unless I point it out to you real nice place for it <laughs> yeah and a little eight sticking out in a circle if you look sideways that's test point eight, which is the um, signal coming from the 4051 analog switches on the front panel, which process um, the processor addresses those to tell you, or the peripheral chips to the processor, tell it which um, one to look at at a given time, and it it um, moves that analog voltage on to the uh, input of the comparator here and tells it. Uh, compares that with the output of the DAC so it can tell it whether the value is the same or not as it was in the memory. Anyway, um, <clears throat> EEPROM chips, this is um, some peripheral chips here and your CPU and the mem main memory there, your SRAM and then uh, what we got here is your chip that is the UART and these are sample and hold cells and these are sample and hold cells for all the uh, analog functions and the big ribbons going over to the analog board there and uh, then you've got uh, the actual sound generation hardware is here these are the TMS 3631 which is poorly documented I can't really find a if anybody has documentation send it to me by all means I'd love to see but it takes codes from uh, IC 17 here which is what we're currently going to show you there's an issue with on this one even though that chip doesn't look like it took any damage it's very strange very strange indeed anyway these are the buffers and uh, actually they're AND gates and they get uh, selected the output can be turned on or off with those and so it's just producing square waves out but these things generate uh, square waves according to um, the frequency needed for the each analog channel so they, those get uh, outputted to those and enabled at the appropriate time. And uh, the high frequency oscillators over here are what drive the A and B chip here and here. The inputs that control which node is being hit are in parallel, so these things um, will produce the same note at the same time, and um, then these can be uh, tuned, detuned, uh, fifth or whatever by your on your B oscillator there on the panel and uh, let's see we've got so that's a nice thing you have smooth analog control at least of those those things there's no stepping it's a very nice sounding synth in that way and you have um, uh, your uh, LFOs and things over here uh, for the uh, that are related to the generation uh, circuitry here everything that is analog controlling those digital oscillators essentially they're they're high frequency analog oscillators they're very stable and um, not quite as stable as uh, a clock but they're very good 
and uh, then these of course are just doing your top octave synth and, and divide down function and assigning the right frequency from that network to the right synth channel. And over here of course you've got your six synthesizer channels. They're all mirror image, mirror image layout. Everything is everything here is over here and it just, you know, everything here is here for the two synth channels. It's mirror image. And so you got six of those with the SSM2024 VCA and the uh, SSM2044 filter, the SSM2056 the envelope generator. And uh, so now we're going to turn it on and you're going to see what happens. Oops, missing note. See that? Okay. Oops. Random time. Okay. We're going to turn that off. We're going to get heat gun. And we're going to heat up IC17, and I have a suspicion that when I do that, it's going to turn on and work. It takes a little while for it to um, fail, so I'm just going to get that chip good and warm. Okay, now let's try it. Still doesn't work. Well, go figure. Hmm, that experiment's wrong, so we'll find out what's really wrong later. That's how everything's been lately. It, it consistently warms up, and the, co the um, code changes. It goes from that chip sending it a clock signal, basically, to it sending it a fixed signal that has uh, uh, little uh, spikes in it. You can see on the scope, which when you hit a key, it sends those spikes, which are the code that it's receiving, and so, very strange, hmm. Yeah, we're looking at a CLDK600 here. <laughs> Just spent a long time last night touching it up. I had sold this already, or one like it, actually, that's over there in the mess. Um, and um, it worked before I left perfectly, and I got back, and it was locking up and uh, just making everything go uh, like the DAC is sending out maximum values for everything. And um, <clears throat> anyway... Mm. These are really great scents, of course. They're all analog. We've got... Um, mm. I like this sound. Really charming little scents. It's good. And I'm just clowning around with a few sounds. I made this one last night. It sounds like... Uh, I don't get any life form breathing from here. Doctor, I suggest you use inverse phasing on your tricoder. What good's that going to do? We're not looking for anti-life. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, these are these are great Isn't machines for a lot of really unique sounds for sure. I got RV goop all over my fingers because I'm getting ready to get a couple of Honda. 90s in shape here to go riding around the woods. Well, what would you do with that? I'm thinking, you know, I, I used goop again. There it is. More RV goop. <laughs> I put tape behind it and gooped it. But anyway, the uh, Trail 90 thing used to be, you can see where it, the T is there. <laughs> Somebody tipped it over outside before I got it and destroyed that in the other box I'm putting together over there. Okay, oh, back to the uh, CL. Anyway, we did a lot of touch-up on this one and got it all good shape here. Um, we were talking about the circuitry a little bit. Of course, the front panel just has uh, multiplexers, as usual, um, that um, are scanning the voltage, the analog voltages created by each of the knobs. And these guys uh, go into a 24 LS 923 chip, which is a little a little button computer. Basically, it the it uh, forms an output that tells it generates a code from the inputs. It's got X Y one two three four whatever inputs, 
And um, ah, there we go. So once those once those um, come in, they come in uh, to the. Uh, you can measure p uh, test point eight. Where is it? Oh, it's right there. It's right under the battery, and next to that connector that I stuck in there. That is your signal coming in from the panel, uh, and you can, should be able to see your uh, voltages going all over the place, depending on what the knobs are set at. You can turn them and see them. Do that. Should we? Should we show them that, Jim? Uh, yeah, oscilloscope probe here. We can show them that signal. Um, do you see the oscilloscope probe? It, it got tangled into a pretzel. Ah, there it is. Okay, I've got other things going on here, and no, no, no just grab the probe and not the yeah. <laughs> there we go. Yeah, that. What's that? Okay, now if I put this on here. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, now Jim, why don't you turn a knob like anything? Just turn the release knob or turn it up and down. Just see that going up and down? Oh yeah, I can see it. Yeah, you can see stuff going up and down there. Okay, that's good. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. Anyway, that's measuring off that second pin instead of there. It goes from test point eight to there. And um, so um, then coming out of the um, buffer here on pin one, you'll see another pattern which is the DAX uh, buffered output and so that is um, all of the signals being fed to the the sample and hold cells that are being uh, fed through these 4051 chips and onto the sample and hold cells in these quad op amps with these capacitors anyway and which feeds the actual analog circuitry and uh, you can look at my poly 6 um, uh, video on that for a more detailed explanation. Maybe I should tag that on here of how that kind of thing works. Anyway, that's kind of the way the computer is in this thing. We have a very similar kind of setup there. The DAC 08021 in this one. Oh, 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 0832. That's right, 0832. 0831 are very similar. And then, uh, anyway, yeah, that's pretty much the insides of a DK600, so... Okay. What do we got now? Let's see. Right out. This thing, this thing always want to hang when you drop them. <laughs> yeah, really, uh, a lot of stuff to tune there, but these don't go bad very often. I've only seen a few resistors fail, and they'll cause something to do something strange, and... Yeah difficult to find sometimes when something does go wrong. Oh, one more thing. I recommend chop R7 and put in a 100 ohm resistor so you can change the 5 volt level. These often will have pretty low voltages in them. This one seems okay. 4.7 or so, but sometimes it gets so low it can cause some issues there. Maybe so. Anyway, yeah, not too bad to have a 5 volt uh, adjustment. Just put a 100 ohm pot in series with that you could actually tie it over onto the second wire there which is connected to R7's side there. So just extend the range of that resistance and yeah.